Julie Eng, thanks so much for coming by the Penguin Magic Podcast. I was floored to find out that you would be willing to sit down for an interview with Very me. Very happy. Penguins have been a big partner for Magicana, so I'm really excited about this too. That actually leads me to my first question, because a lot of our listeners may not be aware of what Magicana is. Could you educate me and them about exactly what it is you all do? and, and For just, sure. Yeah. So Magicana is a not-for-profit arts organization, and we promote magic as a performing art, and it's an advancing magic, and we're located in Canada. Mm -hmm. We're a registered charity, as I mentioned, and we have a wide range of activities that we do. So uh, we used to do a lot of pu live public um, live theater, mm -hmm. producing that. We do a lot of promoting magic as a performance art through the community. So we do outreach programs with children and with seniors. We also publish books, which is you know one of the more exciting areas right now. At the moment, we just have had so many exciting projects. Mm -hmm. And we also do a lot of resource provision for, for visitors. So the one big one that we've really been proud of is the screening room. Mm -hmm. And it's where you can come in and you can scope out all kinds of neat video, mm -hmm. all for free. Really? And yeah, you just come on in. And we've had some really excellent partners come on board with us. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Yeah, please, please. I, I want to know about this. So the screening room was, let me step back one one half step. We are a registered charity, but we've also been very, very happily funded through the Slate Family Foundation because mm -hmm. they believe in the arts and in promotion of the arts. So we were gifted with this opportunity to work with the Slate Family Foundation's uh, web development team, and they built an architecture for us to help us map magic videos so they're available on our website, but not just a streaming of them. It's curated and it's also broken down with some, the human aspect is to break it down with metadata. Oh. So you can go in and do some pretty interesting searches. So it's a searchable database where mm -hmm. you can find all kinds of really important magic videos from history and current. Presumably. Exactly. And also sometimes mm -hmm. video that's never been before released. So let me give you an example. Yeah, Let's yeah. say you were wanting to work on um, an egg bag routine. So yeah. you come to our website and you type in, so type of trick, egg bag. Mm -hmm. Well, Johnny Thompson will pop up, but mm -hmm. all kinds of other performers in the past who have used an egg bag in any crazy way, shape, or form. Because a human has gone through the trouble of watching these videos and tagging, hey, this is an interesting use of the egg bag. So that's, it's great if you're learning a new effect. Yeah. It's a really fantastic resource. It's also a great way to see some of our the masters of magic perform in a different time and, and context. And one of the uh, one of the unique partners that we've had is a gentleman, Larry Thornton from Calgary. Mm -hmm. He had a homemade movie collection and he brought them. So he had from PCAM conventions or perhaps something local like a Calgarian convention. But this is from like 1976, 1977, 1978. So just as that wow. era was coming into a very exciting time for recording mediums. Yeah. So, Michael Skinner, you've got Johnny Ace Palmer on there, you've got vintage Paul Harris on there. All at the top of their game. At the top. Wow. So, Larry was very kind to send the films over to Toronto. We had them digitized, and now they're online, and they're available for people to see. So, we've curated certain aspects of the site, of the screening room in particular, where we can have the Larry Thornton collection, or... If you want to see some great movies from another Canadian uh, broadcast mm -hmm. um, variety show, Dale Harney's The Magic Palace. Oh, you've got all of that digitized. We've got a, a high percentage, I think close to 90% of them. And Dale himself didn't even have any of these. Wow. But again, between the Slate Family Foundation helping us outreach and get some uh, video collections, we've digitized those. We had Larry Thornton also provide some, and they're great quality. So you can go in and you can see, and that was reported to me that Johnny Thompson first performed the Gambler's Ballad, and I believe it's one of the only times he had it recorded in like the early 80s. Mm -hmm. oh. So you'll be able to see really vintage stuff with great quality. And as you said, magicians at the top of their game. <laughs> 